In this video, we want to look at a toroidal solenoid and find out how much energy is stored in such a thing. So I want to take a, a few minutes just to, to, to describe what a toroidal solenoid is. So um, imagine I have here a yellow cylinder. It has some uh, inner radius A and some outer radius B, and it sort of extends some, some distance. So if we were to just sort of chop a section of this off of this cylinder of some sort of length L. Then we get something that looks like this uh, orange picture down here. And so now L is, is maybe in fact small relative to, to A and B. And now what we do with our wires is, is we wrap it around the uh, this these squares as we, as we sort of wrap it around the uh, the 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 toroid, as we um, all the all the way around, and so we have these tightly wrapped coils, like in a regular solenoid, but in instead of uh, circles, each loop being a circle, each loop is is a square, where it has some length l. However, we chop the soil the uh, cylinder and then uh, the height here is the B minus a of the original the the original uh, cylinder that we had and so then we have however many uh, loops that that we can make around this uh, toroid uh, this is in fact the geometry that a lot of actual inductors are made so this is an important uh, geometry to understand. All right, so let's let's do an example of a of a toroid. Let's say that this one has a an area. If this is our area, we'll give ourselves an area of four centimeters squared. We're going to send uh, current through this uh, the the wires here of eleven amps. We'll say this one has fifteen hundred turns. Let's find the the energy stored. Okay, so the energy stored in an inductor is one half times the inductance times the current through the inductor squared. And so we want to find first, let's find what the self inductance of the solenoid is. Well, the self inductance we know is the number of turns in the solenoid given by the average flux per turn, average per turn divided by the current. And so sometimes we give current by small i here, so we might rewrite this L i squared, say. Okay, so this is the current through the, the solenoid. All right, so uh, the average flux per turn then, um, for a solenoid like this, where, where, is the, where is the magnetic field, where is the flux? So if these are loops, then we can say the current is going uh, around the 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 loop in this way, and we uh, find that the magnetic field is perpendicular and constant inside the solenoid, just like in the circular case. And and that's in the previous chapters on creating magnetic fields. There's a derivation of that. But so that helps because then the average flux through each coil then is just the magnetic field times the area because the magnetic field is constant and the n hat vector associated with each area element is parallel to the magnetic field. So the um, inductance then is just the number of turns times the magnetic field times the area divided by the current. Okay, so what is the magnetic field inside the solenoid? Well, maybe we calculated that before too, but if not, we can calculate it again because we can look at an Amperian loop that goes through the middle of our solenoid. And so if we look at that loop, it has some distance r, and as long as we're given some sort of mean radius of the toroid, we can assume that the magnetic field is constant for 
uh, all the values of r sort of between here a and b and so then we have this b dot dl which then just becomes b then 2 pi r because now b is in fact uh, parallel to the 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 dl step throughout and that is equal to the mu naught times the amount of uh, current through the surface bound by the loop. So this surface, this purple surface now, contains uh, all of these uh, wires around all of the loops. So this is equal to the number of turns times the current in each term each turn which we said was i so the magnetic field then is equal to mu naught n times i over 2 pi r where r is the mean radius uh, I don't think we gave a, a mean radius for this one yet but let's do so I mean we'd have to know what that is uh, to be able to solve so let's give ourselves a, a mean radius here of 1.5 centimeters among our uh, knowns and so now we can find the self-inductance because we know B so our our inductance is mu naught n squared times area divided by 2 pi r the I's there is an I here and an I here and they cancel and so finally if we want our energy then is one half uh, we had it here one half L I squared then so uh, mu naught over 4 pi n squared a I squared divided by R so here I took the the two, so u was one half li squared. So I took the two and and put it into that to get my mu naught over four pi, and then the i squared. And then so uh, we know all of those values, and putting them in, I get a final result of 0.726 joules.